Hi, my name is James Carter and I'd like to welcome you to my studio and school. We're a full service jewelry school. We teach everything from cloisonne enamel to raising to any kind of fabrication techniques that you might like to do. And I'd like to invite you to go to our website, jamescarterstudio.com and check it out and see if the, a class might be something you might want to do. The classes run all year long and we have a pretty good time. Today I'm going to show you how to properly connect a Smith Little Torch to oxygen and propane. I'm doing this because I have a lot of students and a lot of friends who have bought this outfit, but there's never been any real instructions on how to get beyond making it work right, except for just hooking up, as far as adjusting the regulators and making the pressure right and going over what each regulator does. I haven't seen it covered. so. On several occasions, people have called me up and you know they said, hey, I've got my brand new torch, uh, but I really don't know how to hook it up. Can you help me out? So this is going to show you how to do it. You can always refer to it for somebody else, pass it along, but this is the way I do it and it's always worked for me. So without further ado, let's get to it. This is what you're going to get when you get your Smith torch from Rio Grande or Auto Fry or whoever you buy it from you're going to get a 20 pound oxygen tank. This is a 40, but it's, it's the same head, so it doesn't really matter. You're going to get an oxygen tank. It's going to be empty. You're going to get a propane tank. You're going to get an oxygen regulator. You're going to get a gas regulator. And you're going to get the Smith Little Torch. These are the parts you're going to have. The tools you're going to need to put this thing together is a crescent wrench has to be a big one because you're going to be dealing with a three quarter inch nut to put this on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just start by putting your oxygen regulator on. Now remember the regulators have are the threads on the regulators, the gas and the oxygen are reversed from each other. This, this way it's a safety factor so that you won't accidentally hook up a gas regulator to an oxygen. Get these things really tight. Some people use Teflon tape. I used to. I don't. Re I don't do it much anymore. There, our oxygen bottle is connected. We're now going to go over here to the gas. I always put my regulators on first before I attach my hoses. Now I'm going to turn this to you so you can see what I'm doing. So we have our gas regulator hooked up. We have our oxygen regulator hooked up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up the torch. Remember, oxygen is always green, cool. Gas, being hot, is always red. This is going to be on everything. Your oxygen bottle itself is green. The letters and everything else on a gas regulator are red. So you're going to have, that, that'll, it's pretty self-apparent. I'm going to go ahead and hook up my gas regulator. Tighten it up. I'm going to come over here. Same thing with my oxygen. Now notice that the threads are going the different, the different direction. Don't try to put one of these on and on and make the threads get all weird on you. Okay. That's basically it. But you're not ready to go yet because the next thing is this next step is very important. These regulators have a diaphragm inside the gauge. If you have a brand new bottle of oxygen, it's got 2,000 pounds of pressure in it. If you open this, you're shooting that much pressure into this, into this regulator and into the diaphragm. You can rupture it if you're not careful. So what I do is this. I take my T-bar and I loosen it all the way to the left and if you keep on loosening it to the left, it'll come out. It's no big deal. You can put it back in. 
but I loosen it all the way. Same thing with my gas. I loosen it all the way. What this does, this releases the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is floppy inside. Then when you turn your oxygen on, you're just, it's just going to flap inside and it's not going to be taut to where it could tear. Your regulator has two gauges. This gauge over here tells you how much pressure you want to use when you're soldering. No more than five or six or seven pounds. This right here tells you how much oxygen you have in the bottle. A full bottle is going to drop, draw all the way up here to 2,000. The red letters are what you're looking for. So when I loosen this up, then my two needles are all the way against that bar. Now I'm ready to open my oxygen bottle. I like to open it all the way. So it's going to come up here and it's going to be at 2,000 pounds because it's a full bottle. Then I take my T-bar and I tighten up the diaphragm inside the regulator until I get, until I see that little bar move about that much. That's all I need. My gas regulator, as you, as you know, I've already loosened my bar. I'm now going to turn on my gas. And you can see this needle's telling me how much I have. I'm going to tighten this up until I get just under 5 PSI. That's all you need. My next step is I'm going to turn my gas on, strike it, and I have a flame. So everything's working. I always turn my gas on first and then I add my oxygen to it. One thing I also want to emphasize, at the end of the day, when you're finished soldering and you want to turn your torches off, you do not have to go through all this again. This is set. It doesn't have to be changed again until you change your bottles. That's the only time you have to do it. When you're finished soldering for the day, you simply take your, take your, your bottle, turn it all the way off, the same with the gas. When you come back the next morning, all you have to do is open this. You simply do not have to touch this adjustment again until, like I said, until you change your bottles. I hope this has helped you out as far as connecting your oxygen and your little Smith, your Smith little torch together. It's a great torch. I've been using it for a year. As you can see, all of my benches here are equipped with it. It's done, and I've gone through every torch in the world until I've come across this one and I really like it. You just have to practice your soldering. If you decide that you want to get more involved in soldering, I have to give a little blurb to my DVD while I'm here. And that's this, The Metal Smithing Basics. It's my newest DVD that I put together and it's in chapters. It's been five star on Amazon and John Cogswell gave it a really nice review. Uh, it covers everything you're going to need about metalsmithing, a lot of metalsmithing essentials. It's on my website, jamescarterstudio.com. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I clear things up for you, and I'd like to hear from you. Check out the website, go to it, take a class. Have a great day.